Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Ms. Miriam Rowland, psychotherapist, communitarian, and dedicated philanthropist. Ms. Rowland's con commitment to community service and her contributions to the advancement of education are exemplary. They were instilled in her as a child at home. As she says, she was told, the same way we eat three meals a day, we give to those in need. Son souci pour les autres et l'importance qu'elle accorde au contact personnel s'exprime dans sa pratique de la psychothérapie et son engagement soutenu auprès des organismes à vocation sociale au Canada et aux États-Unis. At Concordia, she's championed mandatory business ethics courses for JMSB graduate students. She's advocated for small class sizes in our EV complex. The Miriam Roland, uh, excuse me, the Miriam Aaron Roland graduate fellowships she established earlier this year are the latest in a long line of generous gestures that benefit students and the broader public. With the fellowships, as she has said, she's giving opportunity. In this and in so many other ways, Miriam Rowland's attitudes and acts match the Concordia ethos. I'll just stop also and thank her for the sponsored uh, seminar series in our department. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and my honor to present to you Ms. Miriam Rowland so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. I would like to invite Dr. Roland to address the convocation. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family and friends. Je voudrais remercier Concordia du fond du cœur pour cet honneur et encore plus de m'avoir donné l'occasion de contribuer à la croissance et à la sort de l'université. All of us have different backgrounds and aspirations, but today we are united by a connection to Concordia. Mine began in 1978. I left Montreal after I finished high school and spent the next 30 years in California before returning here. From the window of my new home, I could see a big white building. Within days, I was inside it to register for classes. The first people to ring my doorbell were two enumerators who had come to sign me up for the voters list. I was so happy I cried. As a Canadian living in the United States, I could not vote, 
now I had the privilege, but I knew nothing about Canadian politics. For the course I was taking at Concordia, I selected the upcoming election as the topic for my term paper. And that gave me the courage to interview all the candidates. The one I voted for didn't win, but I got an A in my paper. <laughs> when I graduated from Stanford in 1951, it was an optimistic time. World War II had ended. The United Nations had been established and California's population was growing rapidly. Unlike today, the question for male graduates was not whether they would get a job, but which job would they accept? It was different for women. Society expected that women after graduation would marry, become housewives, and as the magazines advised, look pretty when their husbands came home from work. There was little possibility for the few who trained for a professional career to be hired by a law firm or accepted for a medical residency. Instead, women used their brains and their time to serve the community as valued volunteers. I joined statewide study groups to report to the government in Sacramento about the safety of nuclear power plants and how textbooks depicted history to portray the roles of women and minorities in, so in society. I supported the women's movement and safe in California, I marched for civil rights, protested against the war in Vietnam and was part of the crowd watching the first big gay pride parade in San Francisco. I knew that my acts would not make an impact, but there is power in numbers and it was uplifting for me to be with people who were deciding and working to make change. Dissatisfaction is a great motivator. Peace, gender, and social equality remain as prominent concerns. Often the demands of daily life provide little time for considering global issues. Sometimes, though, a little thing provokes much thought. Remember Proust's Madeleine? My little thing recently was a raisin. You may be familiar with mindfulness, a process bringing your attention to the current moment. The technique is to hold a raisin in the palm of your hand and examine it intently for five to 10 minutes. But that day, questions interfered with my focus. Would climate change affect the areas where grapes are grown to produce raisins? In growing grapes, were pesticides used that could contaminate the environment? Were the workers who picked the grapes treated fairly and paid fairly? In order to stop the question that that raisin was making me think about, I ate the raisin. <laughs> As graduates, you are looking forward to an unpredictable future. A look back, however, may encourage you to continue making progress. Take a moment to be proud of your accomplishments in the past few years, both in and out of the classroom. You have learned skills that will stay with you long after you have forgotten the facts that you crammed into your heads before exams. You've learned how to learn, how to gather and evaluate information. You've learned to be comfortable in a diversified, inclusive environment of students and professors, to listen and to communicate respectfully to those whose opinions differed from yours. You've learned that life is not always fair, but you have the determination to carry on. You've learned to juggle, juggle your schedule to include your non-academic 
as well as your academic responsibilities and still have time for entertainment and fun. You've learned more about your evolving values, who you are, and that may prove to have even greater significance as you confront the future. Forty years have passed since I first looked out my window. I still see Hall, the big white building, but now there are many more Concordia buildings. What gives those structures life and purpose is you, the students, your energy, your hopes. Take that energy to change this wondrous world to enable people to live better lives. Don't be complacent. Continue to learn. Don't be discouraged. You are prepared. You are Concordia graduates. Felicitations. Congratulations. Dr. Roland, we are indeed proud of you. And I have to say, in the years that I have been at Concordia, it has been an honor and a pleasure to work with you on a great many different projects. Welcome to our midst. Welcome as Dr. Roland. 